your favorite blinged out Hollywood star spends a lot of dough? That's for sure. <laughs> Think again. Because when it comes to lavish living, nobody brings it on like the billionaires. I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and, and when I die, I want to come back as me. In the next hour, we're going to show you the never-before-seen lives of the world's richest people. You have to be a little spoiled and show it. We'll visit the grounds of their multi-million dollar compounds. Larry Ellison has bought over a hundred million dollars worth of properties here in beautiful Malibu, California. Take you on board billionaires' private planes and show you how they're tricking out their jumbo jets. It's basically an open canvas for us to create whatever type of interior that they want. And we'll even hitch a ride on the billionaire's favorite toy, the mega yacht. It runs really like a little floating city, and that's what mega yachts all about. Jealous yet? Wait till you meet the world's hottest young billionaires to be. Welcome to my home in Bel Air. Hey, millionaires, call us back when you make some real money. Bill Gates, he's making as much money when he's just sleeping than a lot of these young Hollywood people are making for an entire film. Way more than that. Because <laughs> this is the fabulous life of filthy rich billionaires. In 2006, Donald Trump filed one serious lawsuit in civil court, demanding $5 billion in damages. What happened? Was somebody cheating in his casino? Did somebody rob Trump Towers? Oh no. It was far worse. Some reporter had the gall to accuse Donald Trump of being only a millionaire. It really has nothing to do with ego. Who would think that one would find it slanderous to be called a millionaire but be suing a reporter who said, hey, he's only worth about $250 million. But no, the Donald says it's more like $2.7 billion. Being a billionaire for Donald is a brand. People need to associate him with billions. Otherwise, they're not going to be paying $30 million for apartments. Yeah. Because gaining entree into the billionaire club means joining the most elite economic class on earth. Out of a global population of 6.5 billion humans, a mere 793 are billionaires. Just the interest on the money they have is more than most millionaires will ever collect in a lifetime. Let's take a rich Hollywood celebrity like Reese Witherspoon. She makes up to $29 million a movie. In order for her to become a billionaire, she would have to make 35 movies. That's how rich these billionaires are. If a billionaire wanted to, they could buy about 3,000 Rolls-Royce cars, and that would only get through $1 billion of their fortune. Wow, how far we've come. And if you're lucky enough to join the select club of 10-digit dudes, living in some rinky-dink mega-mansion simply won't do. If you're an A-list celebrity, you might be looking in the range of $10 million for real estate. If you're a billionaire, you don't really have a range. You can go $20 million, $40 million, $60 million, as much as it takes to get what you want. These billionaires have homes all over the world, so when they think about buying a new one, they don't agonize about a multi-million dollar mansion the way a millionaire would. Yeah, because in the world of billionaires, buying a mega home is as easy as grabbing a pack of Twizzlers at the checkout. Just ask billionaire Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban. He bought this Dallas mansion for $15 million in 2000 without ever laying eyes on it. This is my house, Casa de Cubana, and believe it or not, I bought this house sight unseen. A buddy of mine said, trust me, it's a great deal. And then I said, okay, when you have a lot of money, you can take chances. Now, that's one of the great things about being, being a billionaire, you know. Mark's Casa de Cubana spans 24,000 square feet. And look out back, there's a gazebo big enough to fit a couple of million dollar homes. But for Mark, it's just a place to keep his barbecue grill out of the rain. I ain't even started yet. 
This is our summertime hangout here. Now to some people this might be a tennis court, but when you own the Dallas Mavericks, this is a basketball court. And obviously after you get sweaty, then you got the pool. Most people have to like fly somewhere. This is kind of like our own resort. And even though his joint is spread across seven acres, Mark's got one problem most billionaires would rather live without. <laughs> Neighbors. That's why they're spending insane bucks to get extreme isolation. Billionaires sometimes don't want next door neighbors, and they're probably the only people on earth who can afford not to have them. Just ask the richest man on the planet, Microsoft founder Bill Gates. Not only does he have this 66,000 square foot, $140 million high-tech Seattle mega home, but he bought up the 11 surrounding plots for an additional 14.5 million just to make sure he never has to deal with the neighbors. It's a lot more than that. Bill Gates bought about a dozen properties on the shores of Lake Washington, which totally insulate him and his family from the world. And Bill's Microsoft co-founder, Paul Allen? With a net worth of $22 billion, he's got plenty of cash to make sure nobody's shacking up next door. Paul built a 7.5-acre, 47,000-square-foot compound on Washington State's breathtaking Mercer Island. This $120 million estate has not one, but five mansions including a 10,000 square foot abode for Paul and a 6,500 square footer for his mommy. I think it makes a lot of sense. One mansion is for his mother. The others might just be buffers so that he doesn't have to have somebody living next to him. But no billionaire spends for complete privacy like Oracle founder and $16 billion man, Larry Ellison. He already owns $245 million worth of real estate around the world. It's bought and paid for. But Larry wanted even more solitude. So in 2003, he set his sights on a nice quiet spread in Malibu Beach. Only problem, there's no such thing as a nice quiet spread in Malibu. Everyone wants to be on the beach in Malibu. It is tightly packed with celebrities and millionaires. So what's a poor billionaire to do? Easy. Larry just bought up a whole swath of homes in Malibu's most exclusive area, Carbon Beach, and made himself the only kid on the block. It's so rare to actually get property available on Carbon Beach. Behind us here are five consecutive properties that Ellison recently purchased. He actually went up to the doors and knocked and said, I'm gonna give you an offer that you can't refuse, and basically they decided to sell. Yeah. Yes, that's five ultra-plush beachfront properties in a row. Just for a little freaking privacy. Within the last few years, Larry Ellison has bought over $100 million worth of properties here in beautiful Malibu, California. If you have a palace, that just gives you cachet way far above and beyond a regular billionaire. Owning a palace is the ultimate in billionaire living and one of the fringe benefits of being a royal billionaire. Can you imagine calling Domino's Pizza and saying, like, yes, I need like a pepperoni pizza sent it to the palace. But if you thought palaces were just something of the past, think again. Because these days, billionaires are building brand new ones. Bigger and more tricked out than in the days of yore. Take this guy, the oil-rich Sultan of Brunei. He built himself this shiny new palace in the early 80s. And at 2.1 million square feet, it's the largest residential palace in the world. This place is gold domed. It's bigger than the Vatican. It's on par with Versailles. It's got 1,788 rooms, and its dining room seats 5,000 people. Then there's 49-year-old Saudi Prince Alwaleed. In 1997, he dropped $130 million to build his very own palatial oasis. Why not when you're worth $20 billion? Prince Alwaleed of Saudi Arabia's palace is bigger, grander, more lavish probably than the homes of the top five billionaires in the world 
put together. And this is someone who's living truly the most luxurious and wealthy lifestyle that you can imagine. Close your eyes and imagine Prince Al Walid's personal paradise in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. With 317 rooms, this Mideast mammoth checks in at 400,000 square feet. It's got a 20-foot high wall of water fountain and a 75-foot high foyer framed by dual winding staircases. There are also indoor-outdoor swimming pools, a screening room, a bowling alley, and a beauty salon. I feel at home, really. I like it. And just like a Sahara sandstorm, Al Walid's ginormous palace has been known to swallow travelers whole. I think we're alone. Yeah. I got lost in one of the, in his closets. They just go, would go on and on and on. You, you had no idea where you were. Everyone walks around the prince's palace with walkie-talkies and say, "I'm in this green room." Oh, that's the so-and-so room. Go into the blue room, and then a quarter mile later, you'd be somewhere, and maybe someone would find you. Good thing the prince has a staff of 180 to help with search and rescue. So Al Walid can kick back in front of one of his 520 TVs and worry about what really matters. His money. The stars. Unreachable normal human has a billion bucks. Take Virgin Airlines boss Richard Branson. He's building his own rocket ship designed for space tourism. Virgin Galactic. Or Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos. He's building a spaceship and his own personal spaceport on his West Texas ranch. But Microsoft founder Paul Allen is one step ahead of the space pack. His Spaceship One was the first private rocket to leave the Earth's atmosphere. It seems to be a, a logical thing for a billionaire because it's a new way to spend money. So if you have the billions, why not buy yourself a spaceship? It's not often you get a chance to participate in the making of history. And if you think their rocket ships are far out, check out how they're jet-setting around Mother Earth. A must for a billionaire is owning a jet ready to go anywhere at any time. You don't want to be a billionaire having to wait in line at the airport. You need to be able to pack your bag, get on a plane at any time of day or night. These billionaires fly around in their private jets the way you and I commute to work. And the billionaire's staple sky ride? It's one of the speediest things on two wings, the super fast, super fly Gulfstream. Billionaires purchase Gulfstream jets because they want to get someplace in a hurry. They're sleek, they're modern. So many billionaires have their own Gulfstream. Oprah has one, Larry Ellison has one. It's the ultimate status symbol. Just ask internet billionaire Mark Cuban. He bought this state-of-the-art Gulfstream G550 in 2005 for $42 million. Most people have an easy chair or a favorite chair at home. This is my favorite chair. Right here on the jet where I can just kick back and just do whatever. Where most people are worrying about everything that, that might come up, I'm flying somewhere fun. I'm on my way to Vegas. You know, if I get a wild hair and we want to go to dinner in New York, or LA, great. Cuban's Gulfstream G550 has a full-time pilot, wood imported from the Ivory Coast, 24 karat gold cup holders, and state-of-the-art technology, all customized to Mark's specifications. The nice thing about having billions of dollars is that you get to do what you want, where you want, how you want, and when you want. I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and, and when I die, I want to come back as me. While the Gulf Streams might be the sleekest thing in the sky, for billionaires who want a little more legroom, they're buying their own jumbo Boeing jets, turning airborne behemoths into their own personal mansions in the sky.
Boeing is known for building commercial airplanes for American Airlines, Delta, but when the billionaires started snapping up these planes, Boeing started a special division just to build aircraft for billionaires. You have to be a little spoiled and show it. And Donald does. He's got his own 727. Then there's the Google guys, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. They bought themselves a banging Boeing 767 in 2005. And Saudi Prince Al Louid, he travels in style in his own 747, the monster of the Boeing line, with a staggering 40,000 cubic feet of interior space. They spend quite a bit. That's right. While the sticker price on your average jumbo jet can run over $200 million, billionaires are spending way more than that to make them nice and comfy. Lights, please. Here's your typical commercial airliner. Cramped seating for 500, six tiny bathrooms, and stale peanuts. One bag per passenger. But when a billionaire gets hold of a jumbo jet, out go the seats, and in go all the amenities of a palace. Plus all the peanuts you want. They have jets where it's you know, bedrooms and, and state rooms and makes Air Force One look like just awful. If they have a favorite interior designer who has designed their main home, they can also have that interior decorator on board. Or they hire this guy, Edis Doré. The New York City-based high-end interior designer who specializes in reinventing jumbo jets for billionaires. When a billionaire comes to us with their aircraft, it's basically an open canvas for us to create whatever type of interior that they want. And Edis, he gets some pretty insane requests. It's anything from a modern interior with a jacuzzi or a Playboy's aircraft with an entertainment room with a stripper pole. And another client wanted us to have their 747 essentially look like the entrance to Skibo Castle. And the upper deck lounge was basically a smoking room that you would find within the castle itself. The cabin's only limited by uh, the person's imagination. Yeah, because when you're a billionaire, the sky's the limit. Step aboard the shadow. With a spa, beauty salon, a 5,000 bottle wine cellar, floating putting green, and its own onboard security force, it's the ultimate dream yacht, right? Wrong. For billionaires, the shadow's just a floating storage space. So they can tow big ticket toys like helicopters and limousines behind their yachts. The shadow has put billionaire boating over the top. It drives along behind the yacht and basically offers all the comforts your mansion back at home and puts it out at sea and you can take it anywhere in the world with you. To rent the shadow for one month, it costs seagoing billionaires nearly half a million dollars. But if billionaires have got ocean-going storage like this, you'd better believe their actual yachts are out of sight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A celebrity and a millionaire can charter a yacht. Oh, How you doing? A billionaire is the one that owns it. A yacht is one of the most expensive things that you can own in the entire universe. The insurance value of this boat is more than $100 million. <laughs> and please, don't call them yachts. Billionaires have mega yachts. What's the difference? A yacht maxes out at a measly 80 feet and usually costs under a million bucks. But a mega yacht? It can be 200, 300, 500 feet long and cost hundreds of millions of dollars. These mega yachts are just different class. Some of them take up to three years to build. They have to be built in special shipyard. There are only about 80 of these mega yachts in the world. So it's an incredibly exclusive item to own. When you get to a yacht over 350 feet, you can't even dock it. You need to keep it in the water and then take another boat over to the dock. When you're a billionaire and you've got a yacht, you can basically turn it into your own floating cruise ship and have everything you want and totally kit it out. Yeah, 
Want to see one of the 10 largest billionaire mega yachts in America? Step aboard blockbuster founder and Miami Dolphins owner Wayne Huizenga's personal mega yacht. Before he made his billions, Wayne used to drive a garbage truck. Now, he's at the helm of this, the Floridian. This is the Floridian, it's definitely a billionaire's yacht. Comes with a large cinema upstairs, a viewing lounge up there. Down below we have a swim-up pool, which is also a jacuzzi and a hot tub. She also comes with a big helipad on the aft deck, so we can land a 14-passenger helicopter. She carries 17 crew, and she has six staterooms, so you can sleep up to 12 guests. She can go transatlantic two ways without fueling her up. It runs really like a little floating city, and that's what uh, a mega yacht's all about. But at 228 feet, the Floridian is at the petite end of the mega yachts. These days, some billionaire sailor boys are playing real-life battleship to prove who has the biggest, baddest yacht on the sea. Who has the biggest yacht in the harbor is a favorite billionaire's game to play. Want to play along? Welcome to the Fabulous Life's Billionaire Battle of the Mega Yachts. Starting with Captain Number One, Russia's richest man, Roman Abramovich. Raised as an orphan in his native Russia, he became a captain of the oil industry and then commander at sea. Roman Abramovich owned four yachts. In 2004, he took them all to Portugal and had breakfast on one, lunch on another, and dinner on yet the third. Roman's flagship. It's the 377-foot, $125 million Pelorus. With an indoor pool and steam room, antique wooden floors, a staff of 42, and rooms for 22 guests. And for this safety-conscious billionaire, it's all about the security. His Pelorus features a submarine for hunting deep-sea mines, a built-in missile detection system, and a bulletproof exterior. He's got it on the yacht, he's got it on the plane. I mean, you wonder if he walks around town with a little bubble around him that's an anti-missile defense system. So Roman's got a whole lot of boat. But billionaire captain number two in our battle of the mega yachts, Microsoft Playboy Paul Allen. He has a fleet that'll blow Romans out of the water. And his big dog, it's called the Octopus. I mean, it's just amazing. Paul Allen's 414-foot, $200 million yacht is called the Octopus, and it's got a basketball court, a movie theater. It's longer than the Seattle Seahawks football field, the football team that he owns. He uses it to throw these fabulous parties where he entertains amazing celebrities all the time. Just last year, Paul Allen had the likes of George Lucas, Justin Timberlake, and Cameron Diaz, uh, Bono, and Usher on his yacht. When Usher was on board the ship, he recorded a song with Paul Allen in the onboard recording studio. But docked right next to Allen's octopus and all those exotic party locales is an even bigger boat. The $200 million rising sun. It belongs to billionaire captain number three, Allen's tech industry rival, Larry Ellison. Larry's five-story maritime monster features 82 rooms, a spa, and a basketball court that doubles as a helipad. And at 453 feet, it outstrips Paul's octopus by 39 feet. Oh yeah, 
Larry made sure of that. Larry Ellison and Paul Allen have been in the billionaire battle over the size of their yachts. And currently, Larry Ellison's the winner. When Larry Ellison heard that Paul Allen was building a bigger yacht than his, he asked his designers to add 50 feet on just so that he can say, I have the biggest boat. It is absolutely true. But even though Larry supersized the rising sun, he'd have to tack on another 72 feet to match our reigning mega yacht. The world's longest, largest, baddest mega yacht of all time. At the helm, it's billionaire captain number four, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai. And his royal $300 million platinum is a record-breaking 525 feet long. That's bigger than a Royal Navy destroyer. The ruler of Dubai doesn't so much have a yacht as he has his own floating neighborhood. You can have a lot of people on that yacht and never actually have to interact with them. Still under construction, the platinum's as luxurious as it is long. With two master staterooms, a cinema, disco, squash court, plus its own submarine and a helipad for the Prince's Black Hawk chopper. It costs 10% of the total value of the yacht just to upkeep it for a year. So to do the math simply, this billionaire spends $30 million a year to upkeep his yacht. I mean, you take some celebrity, that would be as much money as they made in several years. But the shake must be shaking in his boots. Because reportedly our fave Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich is on a covert mission to develop an even bigger boat. Being built in a German shipyard under a cloak of secrecy, his fifth mega yacht goes by the project codename Secret. But it's no secret that Roman's gonna have the biggest mega yacht on the sea. Abramovich is building another yacht. It'll be the fifth in his collection, and it is reported to be the world's biggest at more than 525 feet long. What will it have? What won't it have? Step into the bedroom of Microsoft founder and richest man alive, Bill Gates. Looks like he's sleeping comfortably, right? He should be. Because while Billy Boy snoozes, his Microsoft empire keeps growing, which means he'll wake up $4 million richer in the morning. Wake up and smell the money, Bill. He's making as much money per night of sleep when he's just sleeping than a lot of these young Hollywood people are making for an entire film that they spend months filming. Way more than that. Bill Gates is so wealthy that the IRS had to have a special computer to calculate his wealth. Bill Gates is the richest man in the world. That says it all, right? That's right. Bill's got plenty to line his mattress. A mind-blowing $50 billion. And when we're talking about fortunes this massive, billionaires have got to make up stuff to spend it all on. And the problem with being so rich is that you can literally get anything you want, anytime, and that money is no object. Give it to me now, give it to me now. To actually spend all of it, it's a challenge. It is probably a full-time job. So much more money than I could ever spend. <laughs> buy things that even the super rich would think is extremely extravagant. It's called fantasy spending. Take billionaire record company mogul David Geffen. He doesn't have regular flaws in his Beverly Hills estate. Oh no. He's got the very wood flaws when Napoleon proposed to Josephine. And our buddy Bill? He recently bought an ultra-rare notebook belonging to Leonardo da Vinci for 32 million bucks. Bill Gates spent 32 million dollars on a little notebook that Leonardo da Vinci had scribbled some ideas in. 
that's how rich these people are. They can just drop $32 million on a little 72-page notebook. But the latest, most lavish trend in billionaire fantasy spending, it's all about owning their own sports franchises. If you're a billionaire, there are only so many fabulous things that you can spend your money on. Cars, houses, jets, yachts. But sports teams give you the opportunity to own people. <laughs> And in the age-old battle between jocks and geeks, owning sports teams is revenge of the nerds, billionaire style. <laughs> for a lot of these guys, when they were younger, for a little geeky, didn't get picked first for the sports team, they're having their sweet revenge now because they own some of the biggest franchises in the country. Take our fave techno geek money man, Mark Cuban. When Mark was in high school, the jocks called him and his friends the Turtle Club because they ran so slow. Now that Mark's filthy rich, he bought himself a bunch of jocks to do the running for him. Mark Cuban has spent almost $300 million on the Dallas Mavericks. I spent a whole hell of a lot of money. <laughs> but no Silicon Valley super nerd conquered the sports world like Microsoft's $22 billion man, Paul Allen. Here's a younger Paul with fellow Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. Not exactly the picture of athletic excellence. But these days, Paul spent almost $265 million for franchises in both the NBA and the NFL. Paul Allen owns the Seattle Seahawks and the Portland Trailblazers, uh, two very well-known franchises in the NFL and the NBA. He's having his very sweet, sweet revenge. I certainly feel that looking around here today, and I hope you feel the same way. Allen may have bought himself a whole lot of jock cred, but he hasn't been able to buy his team's championships. For that, you got to spend even bigger bucks. Like Russian $18 billion man Roman Abramovich. This football fanatic didn't just want to own a soccer team, he wanted to own the best soccer team on earth. In July 2003, Roman Abramovich bought Chelsea Soccer Club for £90 million. Chelsea were pretty good before Roman came along, but as soon as Roman's money came into the equation, they became invincible. Because Roman might have spent 130 million bucks to buy the Chelsea Soccer Club, but to make them truly unbeatable, he traveled the globe on an all-star soccer player shopping spree, blowing a total of $775 million to assemble the highest paid team in British soccer history. He's dwarfed the competition, certainly in terms of payroll. He's the Steinbrenner of soccer. Roman's money paid off because last season they won the championship and they lost one game all season out of 38 games. It's an incredible record. Roman's team is so good in Chelsea that the entire UK is angry at him. British football is pretty much ruined. Oh, those billionaires. They'll never play fair. Don't sweat the technique. Think it's sweet to be a billionaire? Well, there are some lucky b who are guaranteed to become billionaires without ever lifting a finger. Who are they? You're about to meet the four hottest billionaires to be on Earth. Starting with number four. You might recognize 21-year-old Stavros Niarchos as Paris Hilton's sometime boy toy. But the Greek hottie is also heir to a $7.5 billion dynasty. Stavros Niarchos is this billionaire baby and he is hot. People really just want to know about Stavros and what the family is about. He definitely has this European international, you know, mystique about him. Yeah. Because the second baby Stavros was born, he had billions on tap from both his mama and papa. Daddy Philip inherited a Greek shipping empire. And mommy Victoria, she's a Guinness. Of the Irish billionaire beer dynasty Guinnesses. She's got billionaires coming from both sides of him. That's two billionaires squeezing one out. Stavros spent a lot of his childhood in Samaritz, Monaco, those kind of billionaires hangouts. Skiing, windsurfing, playing around on yachts, having a great time. And lately, he's even gone a little Hollywood. He was dating Mary Kate Olsen for a while. 
And then he started dating Paris. He's really gotten involved in some some crazy hijinks. He supposedly trashed a hotel room in Las Vegas over Kelly Osbourne's birthday weekend. He wrecked Paris's three hundred thousand dollar Bentley. So what? This guy can smash as many Bentleys as he wants. That's hot. Whatever. Stavros just earned the first installment of his future fortune. With his 21st birthday in April 2006, he inherited $275 million. Just a taste of the riches to come. Number 3, Amanda Hurst. She's 22 with brains, beauty, and a last name that's truly legendary in the world of American money. Amanda Hearst is a descendant of William Randolph Hearst, the legendary newspaper man. You know, the Hearsts, of course, are worth billions, you know, through their publishing empire. Amanda Hearst is really keeping up the tradition of an old school billionaire to be. She has just sophistication and style and class oozing out of her. Amanda's an heir to a $5.2 billion publishing fortune that includes 12 daily newspapers and over 120 magazines. And she isn't just sitting pretty on the Hearst media empire, she's looking hot in front of the camera too. In the great tradition of spawns of the rich and famous being models, she's modeled for Town & Country magazine, she's modeled for Tommy Hilfiger. People are clamoring for her to do their campaigns and be in their runway shows. But if you stood to inherit billions, why in the hell would you work for a living? Amanda donates whatever she makes on the runway to charity. Next, 26-year-old Casey Johnson. Casey's dad is sitting on an old money war chest of $3.6 billion. The Johnsons, money comes from Johnson & Johnson's, you know, baby powder, band-aids. You just go into the medicine cabinet, there's tons and tons of Johnson & Johnson product. Her dad also owns the Jets, so... Basically, they are definitely a powerful name in this country. Casey Johnson hangs out with other famous celebutants like the Hiltons, but the Hiltons aren't billionaires. Casey's family is. Casey definitely stands to inherit a big fortune, but she's already spending like she's got one. Want proof? Casey invited us over to her brand new multi-million dollar LA mansion to show us how a billionaire-to-be really lives. Welcome to my home in Bel Air. We're going down to the pool area, which is kind of a hike. When I first saw the view of the pool from the house, it's kind of when I fell in love with the home. And there's a lot to love. With a formal sitting room, a dining room, and even a guest house for her full-time live-in chef. But who cares about that stuff? For a billion dollar fashionista, it's all about closet space. I can be in cowboy boots and jeans, and the next day I can be in Pucci. And then the next day I can be in an Armani suit. And she's got plenty of shoes to match. A collection that includes roughly 200 pairs of ultra-lavish Manolo Blahniks worth an estimated $130,000. I love shoes. I'm a shoe freak. Manolo Blahnik. He just started making six inches and he only made a couple pairs, so I bought all of them. But a billionaire to be can't keep her cash in her shoes. She's got to have a whole lot of handbags. And Casey? She's got around a whopping 400 pricey purses. This is where I keep the majority of my uh, handbags. Oh, I love Hermes. I like Gucci. I like Chloe, you know, the Paddington bag, Fendi. I love Chanel. Very cute. If someone followed me around with a camera for 24 hours, they would not believe my life because just, it's absolutely incredible. As one of three siblings, Casey will likely inherit at least a billion bucks. But the best part of being heir to the Johnson & Johnson fortune? Baby powder with your name on it. I represent, okay? Billionaire-to-be number one? It's got to be the 23-year-old Brunei-born, London-bred party machine named Prince Azim. And that's no pretentious fancy boy name. This guy's really a prince. 
is your ultimate billionaire to be. He has no top on what he could spend. Yeah, because when your daddy is the Sultan of Brunei, sitting on twenty billion dollars, you'd better believe you can afford to live a little. Prince Azim has a father that is known all over the world as an icon for lavish spending, and this kid is definitely following in his footsteps. He is following a tradition of sort of international rich, jet set types who throw tons of money around and love to mix with the celebrities. When the raging royal turned 23 in 2005, he flew in half of Hollywood to help him blow out the candles in London. Prince Azim whisked in some glamorous celebrities: Scarlett Johansson, Misha Barton, and Kid Rock. Kid Rock. <laughs> Get me Kid Rock. Everybody wants to get some stupid cash, right? And when the young prince isn't just importing celebs for his shindigs, he's lavishing them with expensive gifts to make sure they're best friends forever. Prince Azim really, really loves to go over the top when he wants to meet someone he really likes. That's for sure. After seeing Usher live in 2001, he reportedly sent the R&B stud a quarter of a million dollars worth of booty, including a pair of Nikes encrusted in diamonds. Ooh, baby. It was really, really sexy. <laughs> and now they're friends. It worked. Oh yeah. Because when you're one of four sons set to divvy up a $20 billion oil fortune, everyone wants to be your buddy.